Hey there folks, I'm Joshua Oro the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. You may remember during late September of 2014, I did a blog on the Peanuts Snoopy Come Home movie. Well, I sure as heck do, and I gotta say, I had a real nostalgic time blogging it for everybody. You may also remember that during the blog, when I did say that the Peanuts gang was getting a new movie with some help from Blue Sky Studios. Well, that moment has finally come, and I'm finally ready to give you viewers a blog on it. Released on November 6, 2015, the movie is... The Peanuts Movie! So, let's begin. Life always seems complicated for good old Charlie Brown, the boy who always tries his best against seemingly impossible odds. When the little red-haired girl moves into his neighborhood, Charlie Brown finds himself completely smitten with her. Meanwhile, his best, his best friend Snoopy embarks on an epic adventure in a fantasy world as a World War I flying ace. The, lovely, the little old beagle pursues his nemesis, the Red Baron, while also trying to win the heart of a beautiful pilot named Fifi. Wonderful. Now, my thoughts on this movie? I absolutely adored it. Like the recent Spongebob movie, it was a great return to childhood and a wonderful reunion to all the familiar faces. But, in order to explain more information, let's move on to Mustang Notes. In 2006, six years after the release of the last original Peanuts strip, as well as the death of creator Charles M. Schultz, his son, Craig Schultz, came up with an idea for a Peanuts film, which he showed to his screenwriter's son, Brian Schultz. I was happy to show my son, Craig said. He showed me how to make it bigger, how to blouse it up more, and he helped me put in structure. When presenting their film to studios, Craig stripped, well stipulated that the film remain under Schultz's control, saying we needed to have absolute quality control and keep it under Dad's legacy. You can't bring people in from the outside and expect them to understand Peanuts. On October 9, 2012, it was announced that 20th Century Fox and Blue Sky Studios were developing a 3D computer-animated feature film based on the strip. With Steve Martino directing from the screenplay by by uh, by Craig Schultz, Brian Schultz, and Cornelius Oliano, Craig, Brian, and Oliano are also producing. Craig claiming there is no one more protective of the comic strip than myself chose Martino as director because he showed faithfulness to classics in his adaptation of Dr. Susan Horton Here's a Who. On the film's plot, Martino said, Here's where I lean thematically. I want to go through this journey. Charlie Brown is that guy who, in the face of repeated failure, picks himself back up and tries again. That's no small task. I have kids who aspire to be something big and great. A star football player or on Broadway. I think what Charlie Brown is, what I hope to show in this film, is the everyday qualities of perseverance to pick yourself back up with a positive attitude. That's every bit as heroic as having a star on, on the Walk of Fame or being a star on Broadway. That's the story's core. This is a feature film story that has, well, a strong dramatic drive and takes its core ideas from the strip. Martino and his animator spent over a year looking at Charles Schultz's original drawing style to help translate the hand-drawn warmth into the cool pixel procession of CGI. Without the fear of something getting lost in translation, such as how the dot of an eye conveyed joy or sorrow so effectively, Martino was also able to get the rights to archive music from previous Peanuts, Peanuts specials. Classic locations Locations are featured, such as Charlie Brown's skating pond, his house, the wall, and Lucy's psychiatrist booth, even retaining their eternal look of the strip. 
Additionally, despite being outdated technology, rotary phones and typewriters are seen, as well as Lucy's psychiatrist booth still costing a nickel. Adult characters use the wah 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 voices, which is represented by a trombone and a plunger mute, as is as in previous Peanuts media, courtesy of New Orleans jazz musician Trombone Shorty. Because of the robust number of existing Peanuts characters, the film does not introduce any new characters. In October 2014, it was revealed that Christoph Beck, the guy who recomposed the Pink Panther theme music in 2006 and 2009, would score the film. Beck stated, With the Peanuts movies, I grew up on those specials from the 1960s and 1970s. That, of course, rerun to this day. I'm very fond of all that Vince Guaraldi music, so what we did was try to find spots in the film where we could sort of touch down and remind people who, we were, who were watching the film that it's still a Peanuts movie. And there's still a place for the music in this film. There's a bunch of spots where we quote Giraldi's music, or we actually re-record his pieces quite faithfully. He also added that the score would be more orchestral that, than Giraldi's previous scores, which were mainly a small jazz combo. Jazz pianist David Benoit contributed to Beck's score. On July 28, 2015, it was announced that pop artist Megan Trainer was writing a, and performing a song for the film, entitled Better When I'm Dancing. Epic Records released the soundtrack album on October 23, 2015. The 20-track album features Trainer's Better When I'm Dancing, Florida's That's What I Like, featuring Fitz, Linus and Lucy, Seating, and Christmas Time is Here by Vince Giraldi from the A Charlie Brown Christmas album. And 15 of Beck's original score for the film. An exclusive edition of the soundtrack released at Target features a second trainer track called Good to Be Alive. The animation, however, is outstanding. While it isn't CGI, it still stays true to Schultz's characters, pretty similar to previous CGI films based on cartoons. Kind of like uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, Astro Boy, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But a bit more kid-friendly. There are also times when a character imagines something in their heads, and inside those imagination balloons are hand-drawn images. There are also a few scenes that are similar to other Peanuts episodes, including the musical special You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. But I won't say what they are due to spoilers, but there are some scenes that I liked the most, like the dancing scenes and the talent show scene. And the story, well... While it is pretty simple, it does seem though it has been done before. Many times. I mean, think about it. Most of the story revolves around a boy who's trying to impress a girl, even though he has a low advantage of doing so. <sighs> well, anyway, now that we got Mustang notes out of the way, let's move on to the cast of this movie. My favorite character, Snoopy, along with his friend Woodstock, are both voiced by Bill Melendez, who sadly passed away on September 2nd, 2008. So, his voice for Snoopy and Woodstock are in reality archive recordings. But despite that, Snoopy's role in this film is to help Charlie Brown achieve his goals, while in a few other scenes he imagines himself trying to shoot down the Red Baron with Woodstock's help. I mean, with Woodstock helping him. However, the rest of the gang have been replaced by different actors. Do they do a good job? Let's take a look. Our 
our main character, Charlie Brown, is voiced by Noah Schnapp. In my opinion, Schnapp does a great job voicing a, a boy who mostly slips up with mostly everything he gets into. But on the positive side, Charlie Brown is kind, funny, honest, and he never gives up. Charlie Brown's sister, Sally Brown, is voiced by Mariel Sheets. Now, I love Sally too. Not just because of her cute and sweet personality, but because she does her best to support her big brother. Next we have Charlie Brown's best friend, Linus Van Pelt, voiced by Alexander Garfin. As usual, Linus mostly sucks his thumb and plays with his blanket, but he does make a great person to be friends with. Linus' sister, Lucy Van Pelt, is voiced by Hadley Bell Miller, who actually does great bringing this arrogant girl to life. But aside from being arrogant and full of herself, she makes a great psychiatrist. Next up is Schroeder, voiced by Noah Johnston. Schroeder is a Beethoven-loving piano boy whom Lucy has a crush on. Next we have Peppermint Patty, voiced by Venus uh, Schultheus, or something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> in my eyes, Venus's voice as Patty is kind of unique, because in the old show, Patty has been voiced by boys to keep with her tomboy personality. Still, Venus does great voicing a tomboy who dozes off in class and likes to talk to Charlie Brown on the phone, and likes to call him Chuck all the time. Next we come to Marcy, voiced by Rebecca Bloom. Marcy is a girl who mostly hangs around Peppermint Patty and calls her Sir all the time. Next we come to Franklin Armstrong, voiced by Marilyn Mar Mar Walker. Walker. Franklin is one of the few kids who rarely appear on the show, and seeing him in this film was a delight for me. Next is Pigpen, the dirtiest kid in the gang, voiced by A.J. Tace. Years ago, when I first saw him in the show, I thought he was an interesting character, especially during the time when I played him in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown at Musical Theater Village back in 2007. And in this film, he's no different. He's still very interesting to me. But the, the scene where I find the funniest that he's involved with is when the sprinkler washes him off and a girl asks who he is. Next we have the little red-haired girl, voiced by Francesca Capaldi. She's a girl who Charlie Brown has a crush on. Some people say that her name is actually Heather, but in my opinion... She's sweet and cute, and I can see that she accepts Charlie Brown for who he is, despite the fact that she rarely talks to him. Finally, there's Fifi, Snoopy's love interest, voiced by Kristen Chenoweth, who was in Strange Magic earlier this year. Chenoweth created a series of conversational-like sounds to create Fifi's language using Melendez's Snoopy recording as a guide and making his sounds more feminine. And now it's time to move on to my final words. Overall, The Peanuts Movie is one of the best animated films of 2015. The characters are familiar, lovable, and funny. The animation looks wonderful and comical. And the story is simple, but a little predictable yet outstanding, and I look forward till next fall when me and my theater friends perform in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown again, I hope. I give this film the highest rating of 100%. I'm sure Charles Schultz will be proud. Well, that's it for today. Be sure to... Wait a minute. I just finished my 99th episode. Which means that next time will be my 100th episode! 
Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do for that? Oh, man, man, what are, what'll be special enough for me to vlog my hundredth episode? Be sure to join me next time for my hundredth episode. Hopefully by then I'll thought of something to blog. Mustang Power.